Psalms 118. If you have your portable Bibles or your mobile Bibles, whatever you want to call it, um, it's going to be, I'm going to be reading from the King James Version of this particular verse um, because uh, NIV really didn't do it justice. It says the same thing, but it's just such, so much more powerful from the King James Version. And it reads Psalms 118, 24 from the King James Version. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. Father, you've given us a message on this day. Have your way, Holy Spirit. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The title of this afternoon's message is, God is still creating. God is still creating. There is plenty of information in this particular verse that is encouraging, and we will cover all of it. The first thing that got my attention from Psalms 118, verse 24, is that God is still creating. Because I was used to reading from Genesis chapter 2, where it says, God had finished the work he had been doing when creating the heavens and the earth. But his ability to create was not finished on that day. God continued creating as seen in Psalms 118, verse 24, after thousands of years from when he began creating the heavens and the earth. God is still creating because this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. God has created this day for us. God has created this day for us. This afternoon, Holy Spirit is going to speak to us about the purpose for creating this day for us and the reasons we should rejoice and be glad in it. God could have chose not to create this day for us as an individual or as we are here today we should be rejoicing and being glad in it we need to be happy this is a joyful day and many times, I'm sure, over the course of today, many children were born. And they said when children are born into this world that we're in, we know that this world is evil and it's so many frustrations and so many things that could hurt us, sicknesses and things of that nature, death. And they said we should cry when that child is born, but we should laugh when we leave this earth. When we die, we should be laughing. We should be celebrating because there's no more struggles, no more heartaches. But we got it a little backwards. But today, he said, this day, you need to rejoice. This day, you need to be happy. And many times, we, we go through things. We went through some things yesterday that we may not have ended up so happy, but today is a new day. Today is a new day to be happy. Today is a new day to rejoice. <clears throat> so, allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you this afternoon. First, in our message this afternoon, we must identify who is the we will in Psalms 118.24. We. Who is the we that this psalmist is talking about? Most people say that David wrote this psalm. Some people say it's anonymous. They really don't know. But many historians think that David probably wrote this psalm after overcoming many adversities he faced before taking full possession of the kingdom to which he had been anointed. David here invites and encourages his friends and those who are in authoritative positions to join him in rejoicing before their God. 
Rejoicing not only because of the dependence of God's goodness, but for their future as well. Rejoice with the expectation of the promised Messiah. They already knew that there was a Messiah coming. They already knew that God was coming through the prophet or maybe some prophet. But they didn't know it was going to be Jesus Christ. But they had expectations. Expectations knowing that God was going to send the deliverer. God was going to free them from their bondage that they were in Egypt. And the bondage of not having a God that they could see. They were trusting that a Messiah was coming really soon. And let, he said, let all of Israel say, he said, let all of Israel say, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Israel is the chosen people of God. And many people don't understand that. They say the Jews are going to all be saved. And we could get into that. We'll get into that another day. But yes, all Jews will be saved. And that's us, the ones who have the circumcised hearts, not the circumcised flesh. So every believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, those are the ones and those who left before the Messiah came expecting Jesus Christ will be saved. <coughs> Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Huh. The chosen were those who had put their trust in the coming Messiah, who died before Christ's coming. The chosen are also those who received the Lord Jesus Christ as his first coming as their personal Savior. Believing he is the new covenant for the resurrection to eternal life. They wanted to, they understood that there was going to be a resurrection that would take place. And they were trusting in that. Therefore, Psalms 118 is speaking to New Ark Covenant Church on the 15th day of September 2024 A.D. Elder Tanja, I know you. I, I kind of warned you on that one. Bible Thumpers class was really good as always. And she was talking about the A.D. and the B.C. But we're not going to get into that. Y'all need to come to her class to hear what she had to say about that. But this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ, King of Kings, is inviting us to rejoice before our God. Not only because he has blessed us, but because he is God. to speak I'm able to walk and clap my hands for the Lord that makes me happy what makes you happy what makes you rejoice are you mad are you discouraged today God is saying why are you discouraged why are you mad today I made this day for you this day is full of potential this day is full of promises you may have been praying for something. This day is a day that that promise can be fulfilled. You may have, you may have been struggling in your family. You may have a daughter who has gone astray. But today is the day that God can change what is happening in that daughter's life. You may have a son that is addicted to drugs. And all of a sudden today is the promise that God says will come into fruition. I will deliver him from his addiction because this is full of potential. That means you should rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, have your way, Holy Spirit. So let us continue looking at the verse by looking at this day. This day. I remember a day in the year of 1985. A day that the Lord made for me. A time to accept him as my Lord and Savior. I remember where I was at. I was working at Palmetto General Hospital. And when I was working in Palmetto General Hospital, most of y'all know where that hospital is at. Maybe many of you have been there before. Maybe you worked there. Maybe you went to the ER there. Maybe you've been in a the hospital there. 
But I worked in surgery there. And there was a room that when I was on call, I would go to that it was far away from everybody. And I would close the door, put towels in the bottom so that nobody could smell what I was getting ready to do. And I would smoke a joint right in the surgical suite. That's where I met Jesus. And I said, Lord, Richard and I said, all I got to do is believe in you. And uh, you will set me free. And I said, I, I want you to come into my life. I didn't know how to pray this, the fancy prayer at that time. I just was begging him from my heart to come into my life. I remember that day. He made that day for me. And it was late in the midnight hour. I was on call. They, the, our regular shift was from 7 in the morning until 11 at night. After 11, they called us in. And it was only us in the surgical team there. And God made that day for me. And after I prayed that prayer, and I said, thank you, Jesus, I, I finished smoking the joint. <laughs> but I knew God did something in my life. I knew something happened because the next day, Today, things were a little different. Y'all not hearing me. The next day, things were a little different. On my way home, he could have killed me. On my way home, he said, well, I saved you <laughs> 1.30 this morning, but you're going to die. But I was gracious enough to allow you to accept me. But the next day, the day that the Lord had made for me. I knew it was something different. I couldn't wait to get into a church. So I went to a Spanish church where they only spoke Spanish. Somebody had to translate to me. That was another day that the Lord had made for me so that I can hear his voice and say, wow, I've never heard that before. So I need to go to an English church to see if I'm still going to like this. Because before, I did not like what I was hearing. I didn't understand it. I pretended to be right with God. But he gave me another day to get right with him. That was in 1985. And look, we're in 2024. This is the day, September 15th, the Lord made for me. Still creating. Jesus said that the will of the Father is that all men be saved. John 3, 17, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. If you can say today that you are saved you should rejoice that God gave you the opportunity to accept his son, Jesus Christ, as your personal savior. But many people, unfortunately, don't know the magnitude of God allowing you to say, I receive you, Jesus, as my personal savior. Thank you for dying for all my sins. Many people don't know how powerful that is. Eternal life is more powerful than any other, any other accomplishments, any other things you have gotten from God. Nothing compares to having eternal life. If God don't give you nothing else, eternal life is all you need. Well, I ain't getting a lot of amens on that for some reason. We could have died the day before God created the next day without accepting eternal life, which is found only in the Lord Jesus Christ. Tomorrow is not promised to us, my brothers and sisters. This is why it is important that we understand the importance of preaching the gospel to lost souls. Because as long as there's another day created by God, it is another day a person can be saved from condemnation on the day of judgment. On that day... Many will come before God. He'll say, depart from me, ye worker of iniquity, for I never knew you. They didn't take advantage of the day that God made for them to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. But you have. You will resurrect. If you're still alive when Jesus comes the second, the second, in the second coming, 
You will get caught up into heaven with those who have left before us. We will never die. We will resurrect and be with God forever. Some of you don't comprehend that right now. That's maybe why you don't rejoice and be glad in it as I do. Because I know that I was a scoundrel. I was lost. I was a person filled with sin. And God had mercy upon my soul. And he said, I have chosen you. Now receive the election. And I surrendered. Tomorrow's not promised to us. I was just thinking the other day how a young man with a knife was playing with a knife, called himself playing with a knife. I know he had a little grudge with me and started acting like he was stabbing me, but he actually stabbed me. But he could have stabbed me in my heart and my life would have been over. He reminds me that he made another day for me that when I was stealing from a drug dealer and they were going to kill me because they wanted their money, he gave me another day, an opportunity to get their money because he knew he had plans for me. I don't know about you, my brothers and sisters, but I know why I rejoice for this day. Amen. Our sister Zaria when she was diagnosed with cancer, a very serious cancer, that they, they didn't even think she was gonna survive. But God gave her another day, even though the chemotherapy and the pain was excruciating. She thanked God for that day because it was a day she was still alive. And look at her now, rejoicing, testifying what the Lord has done. There will be many who will not rejoice on the day of judgment because they did not take advantage of the day of salvation. Look at Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19, verse 9. Luke chapter 19, verse 9. Hallelujah. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house because this man too is the son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. The person's house that Jesus visited was a tax collector named Zacchaeus. Tax collectors weren't among the most popular people in Israel. They were despised. Jews that worked for the Roman government were considered traitors. They considered Zacchaeus a traitor. Many were making themselves rich by taking advantage of their fellow Jews. But despite all the sins I committed before the day the Lord visited my house, Jesus loved me and gave me the opportunity to accept him as my personal savior. Just like Zacchaeus, who was considered a loan shark or, or a gangster, stealing from the people, God had mercy on his soul and visited his house. Mm -hmm. Despite... Despite the fact that Zacchaeus was a cheater and a turn goat, Jesus loved him and gave him an opportunity on that day to follow him and become one of his disciples and receive eternal life. Jesus said to him, today, listen what he said, today, today salvation has come to this house. Because this man too is the son of Abraham. God is visiting somebody right now. Speaking to you clearly about your eternal security. You better make sure, my brothers and sisters, that you truly are saved. Because you on that day don't want to be before an awesome almighty God. And you, you think you have made it. And he, said, he separates the sheep from the goat. And then he says to you, you're a goat. 
depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. You don't want to hear that. Because let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. When you are renewed, when you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you are no longer existing. By faith, now you have been crucified. By faith, Christ now lives in you. And by faith, you know that Christ will never say, I don't want to be in the house of the Lord. Jesus wants to be in the house, in the presence of his people. That's why you got to make sure that you're saved. You got to make sure that you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things have, be, old things have passed away. Behold. All things are new. You have a new perspective. You have a new view on life. You read the story about Zacchaeus. He says, Lord, I, I, I'll pay back everything I stole from those people. Because something took place in his life. And all the people, even though the people criticized Jesus for going to a tax collector's house, he said, I'm going to visit him. I thank God that he didn't start listening to the people that I did wrong, that people thought that I should not deserve to be saved. I'm glad God did not listen to them. Revelations 3.20, Jesus says, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. When Jesus came knocking on the door of my heart, I opened the door for him to come in. Christ patiently and persistently waits to get through to us. Not breaking and entering, but knocking. Have you opened the door for him? Have you received him as your personal savior? Christ allows us to decide whether to open our lives to him and welcome him in. But unfortunately, there are those who will intentionally keep his life-changing presence and power on the other side of the door. He gives us power to overcome the adversary. This is the day that the Lord has made. That he has given me power and authority over the adversary, over that old sinful nature. It's life changing. Makes you different. Makes you think different. See, I didn't, I always tell you guys, I didn't like to praise and worship. I thought that was for sissies. I thought that was for weak people. That's why I almost tore Psalms out of my Bible because I thought King David was weak. Because, oh, Lord, I cried out to you. I said, oh, I, until I found out who he was and what he did and how powerful he was that he can praise God like that. So I'm going to speak to the men in here. Stop acting like you all, you can't, you can't praise God. Like you so cool and you, you, you know, that's that sign of weakness. I'm here to tell you, my brothers and sisters, King David danced before the people. And when they criticized him, he told them that don't ever do that again because I am worshiping my God. Man, that's the way people ought to see us. There's no problem lifting up holy hands. My Bible tells me God loves when men will lift up holy hands unto him. My Bible tells me that David sang to the Lord, gave praise to the Lord. Do you know that God sees us? Men, do you know God sees us? And he knows who he's telling to praise him. He knows who he's, tell he's telling to lift up holy hands. Uh -huh. The song we had earlier, rejoice in the Lord always and again I say, again I say rejoice. If you read your Bibles, you'll know that's a verse in the Bible. We're going to read about that in a minute. Yeah. 
This is the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made to receive eternal life. The day of salvation. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. We need to preach the gospel more in church because there's a lot of people that are going to hell that are in church. Because those same people that he said, depart from me, you work of iniquity, they were saying, read your Bible. Oh, my Lord, we were casting out demons in your name. We were healing the sick in your name. The seven sons of seven did that. Because in the Bible, by provoking, by proclaiming, by using Jesus' name, because there's power in the name, demons have to submit. But that don't mean you're saved. Can I preach to you? You better know that you're saved. Don't play with that. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Watching and waiting, looking above, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. But people play around with their salvation. Well, God forgave me of all my sins. He said it, and yes, he did, and that is the truth. But make sure, my brothers and sisters, that there has been some regeneration, that, has, that there has been some, 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 some change in your life. As God's co-workers, we urge you, Paul, as God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. There was a preacher that preached John 3.16 at a revival every day of that revival where some people was getting a little annoyed. Is that all he's going to preach? He's always preaching John 3.16. We've heard that before. But it was one young man that came Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And on that Sunday when the invitation was given, he came up and received the Lord. It wasn't many that received the Lord on that day because they came expecting something different. They came expecting to get something. Uh, there was something offered there, but some of them refused to take what God was offering. But this one man did, and his name was Billy Graham. And God used him to save millions of people before he left this earth. That's how important salvation is. And today is the day of salvation. I don't want to be standing next to you and God when we're getting up in the front. And New Ark, New Ark Covenant Chunk, are you here? We're here. Come forth. I don't want to be standing next to you and you I used to write in my book, steal this book for stealing shame. For Fabian Walker is not your name. For when you die, the Lord will say, where's that book you stole that day? And if you say, I do not know, the Lord will say, down you go. You don't want to be in that position. If you don't like praying, if you don't like reading your word, if you don't like praising, maybe something is wrong with you. Because Jesus loves speaking to God. Holy Spirit loves praising God. You say, Pastor, well, I'm saved. What, what, what does that have to do with me? Are you giving the gospel? Are you so selfish that you don't give the gospel? And you, you say you say, but it's funny how some people say they say, and then you ask, how do you know you say? <laughs> well, I'm hoping I'm saved. Well, if I wasn't saved, what would you tell me I need to do to be saved? And they can't tell you. 
I'm going to, my church starts at 3 p.m. Why don't you come to my church? No. This is the day that the Lord has. That very person you're talking to, they're not guaranteed the next day. And they spoke to you on a Wednesday. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That could be four days God decide not to give them. And their blood will be on your hands. Every day that God creates is a day that God offers salvation to all people. Many put off the decision for Christ thinking that there will be another day that they can accept God's gift of eternal life. However, again, tomorrow is not promised to no one. James 4.14 says it. We do not know what will happen tomorrow. We are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, we should say, if it is the Lord's will, we will do this or that. There's no better time than today to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. So why is Holy Spirit talking this? We're saved. Make sure you're saved. Make sure he's not only your savior, but he's your Lord. He's your master. And he tells you what to do and you do it. He's not just your savior, he's your Lord. And there's a certain standard that he requires of us. There's no better time than today to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. This day, if you need to ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your life, today is the day. I know Holy Spirit is talking to many of you right now. Heed to his word. This day, if you've already received the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, this is the day you should rejoice and be glad in it. Let the chosen one say this is the day that the Lord has made. So who are the we will? The we will are the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's me. Speak for yourself. I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad. Rejoice and be glad. It's our next point. Rejoice and be glad. According to Webster's Dictionary, rejoice as a verb means to feel or show great joy or delight. To show great joy or delight. Marinate on that a little bit. How do you show great joy or delight? I've never seen nobody dance at a party and be mad. Y'all know Spanish people? As soon as they, as soon as their legs move, that smile. Them cowboys that do that line dancing, hey, ka. Ka. They do some fancy line dancing. <laughs> the brothers and sisters, we did the little, you know, the, we had our little thing. But when I seen them cowboys doing it, they be like, yeah! And they be all in step. Don't be running into each other. They show they got joy. When you go to a party, you, you think you're the life of the party. You come in there, you, you get to dancing, you all happy, you having a good time. Nothing wrong with that. So why don't you rejoice and be glad in the Lord's presence? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, when I went to a party, I, I, I didn't dance. I, I just, I, did, I was a hunter. Okay. To rejoice means to show great joy. It's an action. Rejoice as a verb means to put yourself in a position of rejoicing and put it into action. Clap your hands. Sing, shout praises to God, dance, dance before the Lord. One of those songs, the first song we sang said, 
I may sing out a key, but I'm going to sing. I'm going to praise God. Y'all heard that? I said, I hear you, Lord. I will make a joyful noise unto the Lord. You know, I've been blowing the shofar, be trying to, trying to give me a little rhythm. I mean, come on, Holy Spirit. You know, I, Let Holy Spirit speak to you. For years, I've had this shofar. It has some Hebrew letters on it. Last Sunday, Holy Spirit said, do you know what it says? I said, Lord, I don't know what it says. He said, what if somebody would have asked you? I said, I wouldn't know what to tell them. He said, go find out. So I went to a rabbi. Found out what this says. And it says, and I wrote it down. A big blast from the shofar. That's what this says. Holy Spirit had a reason for me finding out what this says. <laughs> See, I connect with them. This is real for me, my brothers and sisters. This is not about pastor being, being a pastor. This is about a servant of the living most high God, serving him, doing what he told me to do. And first and foremost, I come to praise the Lord. Nothing else. I don't wake up saying, this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will prosper. I will do this. I will do that. No, I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord, for another day. But there's a purpose to worship and praise him, to be used by him. Got to clap our hands. To delight means to experience satisfaction. Enjoyment, pleasure, express your joy to the Lord. It's pleasurable. It's funny how the world will offer you pleasures, whether it be in illicit sex, drugs, alcohol, Money, fame, and you praise that money. You take pleasure in people liking you, giving you the thumbs up. If you don't get 100 thumbs up, you buy them. Because it's all about you. But it should be all about the Lord each and every day. Who am I preaching to? Am I preaching to the choir or am I preaching to the church? Since God has given us this day, we should take pleasure. Show God that we are satisfied, <laughs> that we have true joy. I show God I'm satisfied. We will rejoice in the Lord always, and we, will be, and we will be glad in him because we are saved. Turn to Luke chapter 10, verse 20. Luke chapter 10, verse 20. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made. However, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your name are written in the Lamb's book of life, that your name is written in heaven. The most important aspect of Christ's coming was to die on the cross for all our sins and giving us eternal life. We rejoice because we have been delivered from the bondage of sin, the bondage of Satan. Rejoice that we are no longer under the bondage of sin, but now we are free to be slaves to righteousness. The disciples had seen tremendous results as they ministered in Jesus' name. 72 of them were sent out to minister to the people. And when they returned 
with joy after seeing how the demons submitted to them in the name of Jesus. They was all pumped up. They was excited. <laughs> they were elated by the victories they had witnessed, and Jesus shared in their victories and joy. But Jesus warned them, and he wanted them to know that, was, that what was most important was the victory that they received when their names were written in the Lamb's book of life, which is in heaven. This honor was more important than any of their accomplishments. New Our Covenant Church, as we have seen God's miracles at work in our midst and through us, we should not lose sight of the greatest wonder of all, which is our heavenly citizenship. We should rejoice with all that's within us because the salvation of Christ has offered us when he died on the cross for all our sins. This honor is more important than anything we have accomplished thus far in this life. Many of life's rewards seem to go to the intelligent. Many of life's rewards seem to go to the rich. Many of life's rewards seem to go to the good looking or the people in powerful positions. But the kingdom of God is equally available to all regardless of position or abilities or how we look. Vanity in this world is at an all time high. This is why we should praise him. This is why we should rejoice. Because it's not just for the rich. It's for everybody. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. We came to Jesus not through our own strength or brains, but through childlike faith and trust. The same way we came to Christ for eternal life with childlike faith, we we should rejoice in the presence of God like children opening up their gifts on Christmas Day. Like children playing outside with their friends. This is how we should rejoice among our friends. Don't be afraid to lift your hands. Don't be afraid to praise God. Don't be afraid to let the devil know that you are free indeed, because whom the Son has set free is free indeed. But when we draw near to God, he draws near to us. He comes closer to us because he realizes they really want me. They want more of me. And he's going to come closer and closer to us. Julio, I hear you singing, brother. You sound good. The words are right up there. Well, I sing in my mind. Ain't nobody going to make me do anything I don't want to do. That's true. God, God don't, is not going to make you. He wants you to do it because you want to do it. The Lord is still creating opportunities for success. Look at Philippians 4.4. 4. Philippians 4.4. 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. There it is. That's the song. Philippians 4.4. 4. They sang it today. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, again I say, rejoice. I'm going to get my groove on. I don't know how David danced, but he danced out of his clothes. I'm not going to do that. But I'm going to praise God with all my heart. Almost, I'm going to scream. I'm going to shout. Because God knows he's been telling me, this is what I want you to do. The Apostle Paul says, rejoice in the Lord always. This is the song the praise team led us to sing earlier. No matter what your week looked like, this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Today is a day of great possibilities. Forget about the disappointments of yesterday. I've had some phone calls all this week. Brothers and sisters discouraged. And I told them, this is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. Don't worry about tomorrow. Enjoy today. It seems like the children of today got a stronghold on these parents. Let them know that you're going to enjoy your day. Prayerfully, you enjoy yours. Because tomorrow's not promised to you. 
God says, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is a promise that if you obey the, 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 the if you honor and, and, and obey your parents, your life will be long. Tell those children, tomorrow's not promised to you. Get it right with God. As for me, I'm going to enjoy my day. I'm going to be happy. And it's funny how children don't want to see their parents happy. They want to try to tell their parents what they should be doing and what they shouldn't be doing. Today is a day of great potential. Today is a day of promises being fulfilled, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Tomorrow has not come yet, but our chances are great. God is going to do something amazing in our lives today. <laughs> the end of yesterday might not have ended well. You may not have had your joy and your laughter. That's another thing. Don't, don't. You can laugh up here. Be, some people want to look holy. I don't know what the holiness look like, but maybe it's looking sad. Now, that's holy right there. So if they're looking at me, I'm laughing. Yeah. Woo I'm screaming. Yeah. Woo I hear you, Lord. Jesus. I'm having a good time. And some of you might be going around saying, Pastor, be distracting me. <laughs> because you, you focused on me and not on the Lord. It's funny how you can go to a, a party and you can jam it. And somebody that don't know how to dance. That don't distract you. You just be getting your groove on. You be like, uh, they can't dance. But they're having a good time, just like you. Yeah, brother, you know, <laughs> I knew you were going to you going to get me, but that's okay. <laughs> Tomorrow has not come yet, but our chances are great that God is going to do something amazing. The end of yesterday may have not been so joyful. You may not have had no holy laughter, but we have been given another day created by God to rejoice. This is the day that we shall rejoice. The likelihood of something happening, incredible day in our lives, gives us reason to rejoice. My last page, for those who are counting. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the healing of our bodies and minds potentially can happen today. Healing probably has taken place today after many days of prayer. And today, you can rejoice and be glad in it because you received your healing. The ultimate joy comes from Christ dwelling in us. Christ will come again. And at his second coming, we will fully realize this ultimate joy we have. The Apostle Paul was in jail, house arrest. And yet he told the church, rejoice. Ah. Paul's attitude about his circumstances teaches us an important lesson. Our outward circumstances do not need to dictate our inner attitudes. Call people today, they put you on hold. I called Wingstop yesterday to get me just 20 wings. And after 15 minutes, I said, well, I guess I'll go. But I left the phone on. I rode all the way there. 15 minutes later, still they ain't pick up. As soon as I got to the cashier, I said, y'all do me wrong. And, uh, you know, I, I got mine keyed in the, in the directory. Wing stop. Pembroke Pines. She said, oh. I said, y'all going to give me some special attention because y'all put me on hold so long? She said, yeah, yeah, we will. I still waited another 15, 20 minutes to get my wing. But hey, everything's not going to be great. It's not going to go your way. I was watching the, the University of Miami Hurricanes game. It came on two hours late. They were putting a beat down on them. And guess what they did? At a certain time, they took the game off. 
because they had their allotted time and they put on another game. I was not happy about that. <laughs> See, I ain't going to do you like that. <laughs> we'll talk later. <laughs> But it was okay. I watched another game. But some people get so caught up into stuff, this trivial stuff, to mess up their day. The only person that can mess up your day, guess who that is? I can almost, I can almost say, give the benediction now. Oh, oh, let me go ahead and finish this up because this about Paul this is this is gripping here Paul's attitude about his circumstances teaches us an important lesson our outward circumstances do not need to dictate our inner attitude Paul was full of joy because he knew that no matter what happened to him Jesus Christ was with him do you really believe that Christ is with you we will experience the joy Paul had and we will rejoice and be glad in it, but we have to have the same attitude that Paul had. In a letter to Timothy, Paul seemed to be anticipating his death, but he still found the joy that the Lord offers. The joy of the Lord was Paul's strength. Historians say Paul was beheaded. He was beheaded. He knew his, see, throughout his life, he was almost killed. Somebody, they stoned him. They left him for dead. He had to jump out of windows. He was always under attack. The Christians didn't know whether to trust him. The Jews hated him. But he told a church, rejoice. And I'm here to tell you today, we all go through stuff. But I'm telling you today what the Lord's telling us. Rejoice, for this is the day that I've made for you. And be glad in it. Because I'm going to supply you with what you need. <laughs> he was beheaded. Several times in his letter, Paul would encourage the, the Philippians to be joyful. It's easy to get discouraged about unpleasant circumstances or to take unimportant events into life too seriously. Today is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice that deliverance comes from all sorts of evil. But God says, I will deliver you from addictions. I will deliver you. But you got to be patient. You got to wait for me. And trust me. So I love by my brother Maurice. He the real deal. Call him one day. He'll tell you what. He'll tell you. I go through stuff. he tell you. I backslid. he tell you. I had a relapse. he tell you. Smoke some of that stuff. But he always says, but my God has brought me a long ways. We know that. God has brought our brother a long ways. And he's transparent. And that's why he should rejoice and be glad in it. Because today you're here, brother. Today you're not sleeping in someone's um, bathroom, a gas station. You're not taking a shower in a gas station. You have been free. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. My brothers and sisters, if you're struggling with finding your joy, Holy Spirit is reminding you this day that true joy is found in the Lord Jesus Christ and all the promises that are in him. Psalm 16, 9, David says, Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue, my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure. David's tongue rejoiced. David is speaking. David is shouting about the joy he's experiencing. David found the secret to joy. David found joy in spite of his deepest troubles. Our relationship with the Lord determines our outlook in life. Basing our joy on external circumstances means we only, we only find joy when things are going really well. Life has its ups and downs. God's daily presence in our lives is where we find joy and contentment. Trusting God who has created for us another day means we are in our future today. This day we are living in now was predestined for us before the foundation of the earth was laid. 
and there is great potential in it. Like David, let our tongues rejoice. Let us speak about the joy that God gives us every day. His presence is with us at this very moment. When we know he is with us, in us, that gives us great reason to rejoice. Every eye closed. This is the day of salvation. I need you to be sure that you say that there, if you've been struggling and struggling and you, you just don't feel like you, you're there, you may want to pray this prayer. You can pray it in your heart. You can pray it out loud. When you pray it out loud, that even makes the devil even more uh, uh, disturbed. Say, Heavenly Father, I believe your son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross for all my sins. And I receive him right now as my personal Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, the Lord Jesus Christ came into your heart. And I'm all by myself in this fight, but they do not know the infinite size of the God who is by my side. Hey! But my Goliath, standing in the shadow of the Almighty, I ain't lying, no, no. testifying. Man, I'm talking about a big.